Hi there. Welcome back. Now we'll be starting off with class 11th English core course. And the first poem from your textbook, that's the Hornbill textbook, is titled A Photograph. And it's written beautifully by Shirley Tools. So, this is an extremely touching poem. It's a very, very short poem, but it's a very, very touching one indeed. Now, what has been done in this poem is basically it's been divided into three phases. So, three parts are there and these have been covered in three different stanzas. So, let's start off uh, with the first one. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling. Now, here the cardboard basically alludes to a photograph. So when you frame a photograph, they are alluding to that cardboard basically. When the two girls went paddling, so there were two girls who had gone paddling on a beach, each one holding one of my mother's hands. So here the uh, poet is talking about her mother and each one, the two girls over there, they are holding on to her mother's hand. So try to visualize as I'm reading out this poem and explaining it. And she, the big girl, she here is the poet's mother. Some 12 years or so. So at that point of time, the poet's mother was a small kid, right? And she was just 12 years old and she was standing in between her cousins. All three stood still to smile through their hair, right? These are the girls definitely. So they are smiling through their hair. So the hair is coming down and they are smiling through it. Try and visualize it. It's extremely, it's a, it's a good amount of imagery that's been provided in this poem. At the uncle with the camera. So the uncle is taking a picture that's what has been eventually framed up later so the uncle is taking the picture and they are smiling as we all do whenever we uh, stand for uh, taking a photograph right a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born of course when she was 12 years old the poet was not born but she had an extremely sweet face and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet so the sea of course has not changed much, right? Sea will remain as it is. But of course, time passes by. Wash their terribly transient feet. Now what does this mean, terribly transient feet? It basically describes, transient means something that has changed, you know, very much over the years. It has changed drastically over the years. And uh, something that basically is not constant. So terribly transient feet, uh, feet basically alludes to the fact that their feet, now when you are a kid, your feet is usually, you know, does not have any wrinkles or it's just, it's, it's just like, you know, kids feet is like, but as you grow old, as you, you know, age with time, slowly, you know, there are certain changes that appear in your feet as well. So the terribly transient feet is compared with the ocean that has not changed, you know, so feet have changed over a period of time, but the ocean remains as it is. Then... Let's come to the second part. Some 20, 30 years later. Now let's come, that second phase is basically when the poet is born and the poet has grown up. And so has the mother. The mother has also grown up right now. She'd laugh at a snapshot. See Betty and Dolly, she'd say. And look how they dressed us for the beach. So now we come to know that the cousin's name names are Betty and Dolly. And look how they dressed us for the beach. She's looking at the photo and she's reminiscing how beautiful those times were when she was herself a kid. Now she's a mother of course and she's a mother to the poet. So the sea holiday was her past, mine is her laughter. A beautiful and an extremely touching uh, statement made over here. The sea holiday was a past in the sense that of course that has gone by. It's something that has already been done with. Now she is uh, living a completely different life because she has grown up. She has to take care of her family. And mine is her laughter. Which means that the poet's past is her mother's laughter. So when she sees her mother laughing at, when she looks at her photograph and reminisces her past, that is her, you know, memory. The memory that she carries along, right? Both Rai with the labored ease of loss. So Rai basically means disappointed or uh, a little upset. So both are Rai with the labored ease of loss. Now this is an oxymoron in the sense that labored ease of loss. Labored basically means something done with extreme amount of difficulty. And ease of course is done with extreme, you know, uh, very very easily done. Labored ease of loss in the sense that both are missing their past. So when you look at a photograph, you ought, many memories come up in your mind, right? Similarly, these kind of memories even came up in the mother's and in the poet's mind. Mother, when she looked at the photograph, 
and po that poet when she reminisces the smile and that laughter of her mother. So that is how the labor ease of loss comes. Both of them miss their past, the, the days that have gone by. And of course, all of us want to go back and cherish those memorable moments of the past. Let's come to the last phase now. Now that she's been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. So she is no more right now. And as that girl lived in the sense, the young girl, when the, uh, when the poet's mother was young, she was about 12 years old. So that means that it's been around 12 years uh, that she is uh, no more. And of this circumstance, that is nothing to say at all. It silence silences. So this is uh, a very, very, you know, melancholic kind of an ending. It's a sad ending for the fact that uh, the silent silences is also an oxymoron because what happens is when we think of silence, it is naturally, you know, we imagine things to be extremely quiet and silent. So the poet has nothing more to say. Naturally, she has lost her mother and uh, there is a lot of disappointment. But the silence itself has a story to tell. And that is what she is trying to say when she says the silence silences, which is a paradox because when we think of silence, we naturally feel that... Uh, there is nothing happening around and there is uh, no kind of activity taking place but the silence itself has something to say and is conveying a message and the message is of the uh, loss that the poet has experienced. So it's an extremely emotional poem, a touching poem but an exceptionally well written poem by Shirley Toulson has a deep message. So the message underlying this poem is that we must make the most of each moment. We must make memories each moment, cherish each moment with our parents, with our family, because remember, few years uh, from now on, we will just look back and say, oh, we could have made more of that point, uh, we could have enjoyed ourselves at that point of time, right? So that is why enjoy each moment, cherish each moment, don't let it go waste, right? That is the message from this poem. So hope this poem is clear now. Thank you for watching. Do like, share, subscribe and of course, don't forget to leave your comments behind as well.